I was particularly enchanted by something Velikovsky proposed in a work still unpublished at the time. He claimed that, in the earliest remembered epoch, the planet Saturn dominated the sky, close to the Earth, presiding over the mythic Golden Age. It was an outrageous idea, and yet I found in it the inspiration for a life's work. Ancient cultures the world over insisted that an exemplary sun once ruled the sky. For the Egyptians, this former power was the creator Atum Ra, ruling from the center and summit of the sky. In ancient Mesopotamia, we see the primeval sun as a great turning wheel in the heavens, and the astronomers named this body as the planet Saturn. It was from the Romans that we received the planet's name, Saturn. But an archaic Latin name for Saturn was Sol, the sun. In earlier Greek texts, the planet Saturn, called Kronos, was also named Helios, the sun. And even the alchemists preserved this preposterous identity. They called Saturn the best sun. Best sun, superior sun, exemplary sun. The core idea always pointed directly to the axis of the sky, the celestial pole around which the heavens visually turn. As improbable as it may seem, this is where the Egyptians located their primeval sun god, Atum. This motionless spot in the heavens is precisely where later astronomical traditions from Greece to Persia and China all claimed that Saturn had ruled the world, a contradiction of every principle we take for granted today. Ancient chroniclers insisted that the planet Saturn, now just a speck in the sky, had presided over the Golden Age, an epoch of abundance, cosmic harmony, and grandeur. The archaic name of Italy was Saturnia, and tradition held that this very name was given to the original site of Rome. The Sabbath, the special day of rest and reverence, was Saturni Dies, Saturn's Day, a day honored throughout the Mediterranean, the Near East, and beyond. The popular Roman festival, Saturnalia, was a symbolic return to the Saturnia Regna, Saturn's reign, the Golden Age. Much symbolic content of our own New Year's and Christmas celebrations will trace to the Roman Saturnalia and related ancient festivals. In one form or another, every culture that remembered Saturn's reign regarded the planet God as the father of kings, the father of the nation or the race. Ancient traditions identified the Ugaritic and Hebrew El as Saturn. And it was said that the Israelites once saw themselves as Saturn's children. In the same way, the Greeks invoked Kronos as their first father. And the Romans insisted that they were the true descendants of Saturn, arriving in Italy through the adventures of the legendary ancestor Aeneas.
But there was a dark side to Saturn, reflecting the catastrophic end of the Golden Age. This was when, in the words of Manilius, Saturn, the first father, fell to the opposite end of the world axis. This sudden onset of chaos, when heaven itself seemed to fall out of control, has haunted civilizations across the millennia, erupting as doomsday anxiety, the fear that what happened once will happen again. It's almost impossible to believe that ancient people sacrificed their own children, either symbolically or literally, to the planet god Saturn. Saturn was remembered as the devourer of his own children, and as Moloch demanding sacrifice, and as El, or the Elohim, commanding Abraham to sacrifice his own son, Isaac. In the face of evidence that cannot be denied, the reasonable course is to bring the catastrophic source of these memories into the light of day. 